Jordan Love and the Packers clinch the final playoff spot in the NFC. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think there'd be two quarterbacks in the NFC right now that I would definitively take over Jordan Love going into the playoffs. You know, Matthew Stafford won, and then probably Dak Prescott. Other than that, this guy is as hot as anybody going in football. And oh, y'all thought that was bad? Not only is he not willing to give Dak Prescott his credit and call him the best NFC quarterback, but he's also affecting Dak Prescott in a more tangible way. This biased tribalistic hobbit has Josh Allen ranked above Dak Prescott on his MVP ballot when we have all seen since the Buffalo Bills fired their original offensive coordinator, Josh Allen has not been the leading force as to why that team is winning games. He's still been turning the ball over at an incredible rate. He has over 20 turnovers this year. I don't care how many touchdowns he has. His team only won, what, nine or 10 games. What are we doing here? How can you possibly have Josh Allen ranked ahead of Dak Prescott? When Dak Prescott has been consistent all season long, he literally has thrown less than half of the interceptions than Josh Allen has thrown, and he's pretty much beating him in every statistical category that doesn't have to do with running the ball in the end zone. This is getting absolutely ridiculous. We all have seen that James Cook in that running game is the primary reason the Bills have gotten back on track. We have seen the offensive coordinator for the Bills try to game plan around Josh Allen. We have seen Josh Allen's own head coach as recent as this past Sunday, week 18 of this NFL season. We've seen his own head coach admit that Josh Allen is forcing balls in the end zone and he's making bad decisions. We've seen this. We've seen this. We've seen Buffalo have to win in spite of Josh Allen. We've seen Josh Allen make Buffalo winning a lot more difficult. Yet some reason Dan Orlovsky has it stuck in his craw to put Josh Allen above Dak Prescott. I don't care what y'all say. At a minimum, it's negligence. I'm going to call it tribalism. But to be real, y'all can call it whatever you want at this point because the level of bias and disregard and just honestly ineptitude is just shocking and it's disgusting at this point. See, this is exactly the type of tomfoolery that I'm talking about. I'm not even going to show my man's face here because all you need to see is the fact that he's in the back of the end zone and you'll already know exactly who this is. Dan Orlovsky is the latest to contribute to the cesspool that we refer to as the sports media world nowadays with a freezing cold take showing yet again that he's unable, unwilling, or just unqualified to understand exactly how well Dak Prescott is playing and the fact that that he has 100% been the best quarterback this year in the NFC. He's been asked to do the most, and his team has been the most successful off of his throwing arm out of any of the other quarterbacks that was brought up in that conversation. Somehow, Dak Prescott has to play two to three seasons worth of perfect football just for people to give him any type of credit of being a top 10 type of quarterback, yet we have people like Jordan Love and Matthew Stafford that are able to put together successful second halves of their season. Then you have the head honcho of the Keebler Elves, Darren Orlovsky, anointing these guys as the best quarterbacks in the NFC, where we've seen Dak Prescott be not only the most consistent quarterback, but he's playing at the highest level in the position out of anyone. Now, what I'm not going to do is turn this into a Jordan Love slander video because for one, my man just completed his first full season as a starter in the National Football League. That is a hard task for anyone. And just because the media are using the Green Bay Packers as the latest prop to try to downplay the Cowboys and what they're capable of, I am not going to fall into that trap and start trying to talk down on what Jordan Love has been able to accomplish this year. He has had a respectable season. As far as QBR goes, he's a top 10 quarterback if you look at passing yards for the entire season he's number seven on the list if you look at touchdowns he's second on the list so Jordan Love is having a good season I'm happy for him I'm glad he was able to be successful this isn't an attack on Jordan Love 
It's an attack on the integrity of analysts like Dan Orlovsky, where you could literally see it was like pulling teeth for him to try to give any credit to Dak Prescott. He just automatically took Matthew Stafford over Dak Prescott, but we know what that's about. It's the fact that Dan Orlovsky, for a large part of his career, was sitting behind Matthew Stafford, making sure to keep his jockstrap washed and laundered and the seat on his bench warm. So we already know why Dan Orlovsky is being preferential towards a Matthew Stafford, even though we literally saw Matthew Stafford go up against the Cowboys and get absolutely gobsmacked by that defense. And in that very same game, Dak Prescott played his ass off. Against the LA Rams, Dak Prescott went 25 for 31 with an 80.6% completion rate, 300 yards, four touchdowns, and threw one interception for a 133.7 quarterback rating. You know what Matt Stafford did in that game? He went 13 of 22 for 59.1% completion rate, 162 yards, one touchdown, one interception, and posted a quarterback rating of 78.2. So even in the head-to-head -head matchup, Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys have shown and proven this season that Dak is playing at a completely different level than Matthew Stafford and the Rams could not keep up with the Cowboys. Yet, some people out there in Cowboys Nation is letting the media instill fear in them as it pertains to the upcoming matchup against the Green Bay Packers. Yet, we have analysts like Dan Orlovsky pretending that Matthew Stafford has had a better season than Dak Prescott, when if you look at the statistics, Dak Prescott is top two or three in literally every statistical category whereas you can't say the same for Matthew Stafford Dak Prescott is leading the league in touchdowns he's second in QBR by literally 0.2 of a percentage point he didn't reach double digit interceptions Matthew Stafford did Jordan Love also did Dak is third in the league in passing yards for the season Matthew Stafford isn't even in the top 10 Dak is leading the league in completion percentage for guys that started the full season. And not only are Matthew Stafford and Jordan Love nowhere to be pictured on this particular list, but they're not even in the top 20 of quarterbacks with completion percentage. Dak Prescott has the second highest quarterback rating out of full-time starters this year. Matthew Stafford isn't even in the top 10. Jordan Love at least did crack the top 10 on this one. So literally, by all empirical data, meaning the things that you see when you're watching the game, the film, whatever you want to bring up, Dak Prescott has been the best quarterback in the NFC, and it's not even a question. And honestly, it's malpractice that you have these hobbits like Dan Orlovsky on TV peddling these BS narratives. This is the exact reason why Dak Prescott and other Dallas Cowboys would never get the due that they've earned. And you know the next thing I'm really about to go hard on is probably going to be a video later this week. The media has peddled this myth about the Dallas Cowboys that because they have the star on their helmet, that's why they get all the criticism because they also get all of the praise. They also get all the accolades and the glory that comes along with the criticism. But is that actually true? If that was the case, Dak Prescott would be running away with the MVP award right now, wouldn't he? If that was the case, Micah Parsons or Deron Bland would still be solidly ahead in the Defensive Player of the Year voting, wouldn't they? If that was the case, we wouldn't still be fighting to this day on behalf of Darren Woodson to make the Hall of Fame. So I don't want to hear any more crap about the Cowboys wear the star in their helmet. That's why they get all the criticism because they get all the praise and the glory too. No, they don't. No, they don't. So I just don't want to hear that anymore. I don't want to see you guys comment it. I don't want to see anybody try to use that as an argument for why the Cowboys get criticized because the facts have shown, history has shown, the scale is very much so unbalanced. The criticism is way up here and the praise and accolades are way down here. And I know what some of y'all are going to say. Oh, it doesn't matter. We just want the Super Bowl. But I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out there at you guys. Yes, as fans, it doesn't matter to us. All we care about are Super Bowls. But are you seriously trying to tell me that these players don't care about getting awards that they've 
100% earned, especially when it impacts directly how much money that they can make on their contract by triggering different incentives. Do you know if the players care about making the Hall of Fame? Do they want their legacy to be more than just, I played in the NFL and never got my due because I played for the Cowboys? Do we want more of our players to be having to go through what Darren Woodson is going through, one of the best safeties in NFL history that is unable to make the Hall of Fame simply because he played for the Cowboys? Too many other guys on that team made the Hall of Fame. So that's what y'all want, right? Y'all want these players to be getting robbed of all of their accolades and awards so that way 10, 15, 20 years from now we can all be complaining about how C.D. Lamb or Dak Prescott or Michael Parsons or any of these guys truly deserve to be Hall of Fame players, right? So yeah, it actually is a problem that we have our players being robbed and dismissed the way that they are of different awards and accolades that they've earned. Like Dak Prescott is more than likely going to be robbed of MVP and potentially an all-pro vote this year. But it's even more concerning understanding that people like Dan Orlovsky are the very people that are working closely with the folks that are voting on all of these different awards. If you don't see anything wrong with the level of lobbying and stealth ops going on as it pertains to the Dallas Cowboys and how people are trying to discredit them in every step along the way, then I don't know what to tell you, but as Cowboys fans, we should be used to it by now. But just because we're used to it doesn't mean that we have to accept it. And I'm not going to accept it. I made an entire platform for calling out hypocrisy and bullshit just like this. And I'm going to continue to do so. If you guys don't want to do that, that's perfectly fine. That's what I'm here for. Either way, y'all know always in these videos how them Cowboys. Take away, pass. Calling me, texting me, paging me. Asking me, am I still involved? Y'all use the check on me. Listen, 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 listen. I'm still in boys. Hey, hey! Woo, my boy, Hey, I'm still in boys.